Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you could play a song called Hey Pretty Girl by Kip Moore. And we're going to kind of approach it with, with, with kind of an easy strum chord version and then kind of go over the licks for each section. Although, yeah, you may want to kind of look, think about using some of the finger style licks that, that we talk about uh, through the tune, actually, and, and we'll talk about some ways to do that. So, so we're going to start out on a D major chord. And when we play D major, first finger is going to go to the G string on the second fret, second finger on the high E on the second fret, and third finger on the B string on the third fret. And if you kind of strum the D, G, B, and E, then that sounds a D major chord. It sounds really, really happy. And actually, there's this really cool lick around that where we're actually kind of doing an arpeggio um, of the chord where we play open D twice, and then go to third fret on the B string, and then second fret on the G string. So instead of playing the entire D chord, you could just kind of go D, D, B, G, D, D, B, G, D, D, B, G, D, D, B, G. And you may want to kind of think about doing that hybrid picking where you use your, your pick for kind of your bass note and then using some fingers or even just going to finger style if you're kind of digging on, on that particular pro, uh, way of playing it. And then from the D major chord, we're going to go to a B minor chord. And when we play B minor, first finger is going to go across the entire second fret, second finger on the B string on the third fret, third finger on the D string on the fourth fret, and the pinky on the G string on the fourth fret. We'll talk about an easier way to do this in a moment. But if you strum all those together, that's called a B minor chord and it sounds really, really sad. But a lot of times with bar chords, you can take the top few strings and kind of make smaller versions of those chords. So instead of playing B minor that way, if you're kind of looking for an easy way to kind of strum through the song, you can take the first finger and go to the high E on the second fret, second finger on the B string on the third fret, and third finger on the G string on the third fret, or fourth fret. And if you kind of strum the top four strings or the top three strings, that's another way to play B minor. Another way to play B minor, if you're a little bit more adventurous, is taking first finger on the high E second, second finger on the B string third, third finger on the D string on the fourth fret, and the pinky on the G string on the fourth fret. Kind of make it a little bit more powerful B minor. And another possibility would be a reposition B minor uh, 7 for this chord. And the way you play B minor 7, first finger is going to go to the A string on the second fret, second finger on the G string on the second fret, and third finger on the high E on the second fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E, then that sounds a B minor 7 reposition. So that's another possibility. But the lick that kind of happens around the B minor chord actually kind of starts on the second fret on the A string, and then you play third fret on the B string, and then second fret on the G string. So you're going A, A, B, G, A, A, B, G, kind of holding down that 2, 2, 3, 2. Um, and we end up doing the B minor four times. And then from the B minor, we're going to go into an A major chord. And we play A major. First finger is going to go to the D string on the second fret. Second finger is going to go to the G string on the second fret. And the third finger is going to go to the B string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an A major chord that sounds really, really happy. And if you're kind of digging all those arpeggios around the chord, you'd be doing the open A twice and then the B string and the G string for your arpeggio on that. So you'd have A, A, B, G, A, A, B, G, A, A, B, G, A, A, B, G. And then from there, we kind of do a really quick B minor. It's kind of a halftime of, of what we're, we're thinking about the other chords. And then we go to it. And on that, actually, you can do that same. Or actually, on that, when you only have enough time, really, to kind of do second from the A string and the B string if you're kind of doing the arpeggio approach. And then from there, we're going to be going to a G major chord. And when you play G major, first finger is going to go to the A string on the second fret. Second finger is going to go to the low E on the third fret. And third finger on the B string, or high E on the third fret. It's one way to play a G major chord. If you strum all those, that, that's really happy. But the lick, actually, that, that Kip's playing, actually, kind of works off a different voicing for the G major, where you would do first finger on the A string second, second on the, on the low E third, third finger on the B string on the third fret, and the pinky on the high E on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that's another way to play G major. And the arpeggio he's kind of working around is going third on the low E string, and then the B string on the third, and then you can kind of take your first finger to go to the G string on the second fret on the G string. So you're kind of going three, 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 two, three, 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 two, three, 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 two, with the G major chord. And then on the A major chord, at the very, very end, we kind of go do an A major. It's kind of a halftime thing, like the B minor we did, where you just play open A and then second fret on the B. And then you'd be back to the D major chord and kind of our intro lit with that D, 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 B, G, D, D, B, G. So if we were kind of just chording through it, we'd have D major, D major, D major. D major, B minor, B minor, B minor, B minor, A major, B minor, G major, G major, G major, A major, D major, D major, through our verses. 
But a lot of times with a song like this, to kind of make it a little bit more interesting, I do like adding strum patterns. And one of my favorite 4-4 four, four strum patterns is a down, down, up, up, down, up, which may seem a little fast actually for this tune. And you could actually just abbreviate it and make it a down, down, up if you wanted to. But just to try that a lot, we could do the D with the down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. about applying that to our verse progression is the B minor and the A major there there's ones that were kind of half and through the arpeggio and we'll play through that whole arpeggio again in a second but but with those chords you only have enough time for a down down up if you're kind of feeling the beat as the down down up up down up and this works really really well for kind of the, the big build up verse later on where the drums kick in so we tried it that way with our strum banger we have D down down up up down D down down up up down D down down up approach the tune too. Like I said, you could kind of half it. The weird part about halving that strum pattern and doing just a down, down up on each one is you end up kind of just doing one down on, on, on those chords that we were halving before. So we tried it that way. We'd have D with a down, down, up, down, down, up, D, down, down, D, down, down, B minor, down, down, B minor, down, down, B minor, down, down, B minor, down, down, A, down, down, B minor, down, G, down. make that, that well, for the ones we've got back to back you could even fill it in with the down down up up down up now if we were trying the arpeggio all the way through that we'd have the d with the d arpeggio so the oh oh three two and another d and another d and another d and then the b minor There, there, then we go into we have um, kind of a breakdown part where we kind of do the, the B minor part arpeggio right right after that that first verse gets repeated and then we do the D major but but it kind of is like a D slash F sharp and what a D F, F slash F sharp is is where you're taking a D major and kind of adding it in um, an F sharp note in the bass so one way to play that chord is to go low E on the first fret with the first finger second finger on the G string second third finger on the high E on the second, and the pinky on the B string on the third. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a D slash F sharp, which kind of helps point that F sharp note to a G major chord. And then we go back to our D major chord. And another way to play the D slash F sharp actually is if you play the regular D and kind of take your thumb over the low E string on, on the second fret, you can do it with the thumb too, so that's another possibility there too. So chord-wise, through that little, little instrumental part, we got B minor, D, G, D, D, or if we were doing the D slash F sharp, we'd have B minor, D slash F sharp, G, D, D, and if we were doing the arpeggios through that part, you kind of have the B minor to start with, and then we get the D, I would actually hybrid pick this and do low E on the second fret with the second fret on the G at the same time, and then go to third fret on the low E string with the open G and kind of play two notes instead to kind of imply the F slash F sharp G chord, and then you'd be back to the D chord. So you'd have your B minor, G, D slash F sharp, G, D, D, and then from there, then we, then we kind of go back through our verse. So we tried that with our strumming, actually, something else you may want to think about adding is bass notes to the strum pattern. So for instance, on the D chord, you can do the D string for your bass note. So do the D bass down, up, up, down, up, do the D bass down, and you can kind of simulate playing with the bass player if you're kind of looking for easier strumming ways of doing this. 
You may want to take all these different ways that we're talking about and mix them up later to kind of figure out your own version of how you want to cover the song. And then from the D major, then we had go to the B minor chord, you'd have the A string for the bass on the B minor. And if you're doing one of the smaller B minors, you may have to fade that kind of on the, on the G string. And then on the A major, you'd have the A string for your bass. So a bass down, up, down, bass with an A bass down, up, up down, bass with an A bass down, up, up, down. And on the G chord, you'd have the low E string for your bass. So low E bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down, up, up, down. And then if you're doing the D slash L sharp, you'd have the low E string for your bass. You kind of throw it in that voice before the D chord. So we tried that next verse that way with our basses. We'd have D with a D bass down, up, up, down, D with a D bass down, up, up, down, D with a D bass down, up. Bass down, up, up, down, be my with an A bass down, up, up, down, be my with an A bass down, up, up, down, be my with an A bass down, up, up, down, be my with an A bass down, up, up, down, be with an A bass down, up, up, down, be my with a bass down, up, up, down, be my bass down, up, up, down, be with a bass down, up, up, down, be with a bass down, up, up, down, be with an A bass down, up, up, down, be with an A bass down, up, up, down, be with an A bass down, up, up, down, be with an A bass down, up, up, down, be with an A bass down, up, up, down, be with an A bass down, up, up, down, be with an A bass down, up, up, down, be with an A bass down, up, up, down, be with an A bass down, up, up, down, be with an A bass down, up, up, down, be with an A bass down, up, up, down, be with an A bass down, up, up, down, and then there's this really cool little quick change to something called A slash F sharp or an A major with a C sharp in the bass. And what you'd be trying to add to the C chord is the A string on the fourth fret, which is a C sharp note. So if you kind of do that, that with the third finger, you could kind of get your first finger to kind of bar the D, G, B for, for your A chord. So if you wanted to try and add that in, a little bit safer way, I guess, would be taking the pinky and going to the high E on the fifth. You know, that's kind of a pain. And this change doesn't last long. You could just stay on the A and not worry about the A slash C sharp. But, but, so we go from A, and then A slash C sharp, D major, D major, and then we do a D slash F sharp, and then a G major, and then D major, D major, and then we go to A major, but then we go to an F sharp minor chord, and the way you play F sharp minor, you bar second fret um, across with the first finger, third finger on the A string on the fourth fret, and the pinky on the D string on the fourth fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like F sharp minor chord, which sounds really sad. Like we were talking about, you can really take kind of the top few strings and make a smaller version of that chord. And this chord doesn't last very long, so if you wanted to stay on the A for that change, you could too. Um, but in, and as far as the licks go, actually, a lot of the licks are kind of coming back, but just walk through the rest of that. Then from the F sharp minor, you go to the B minor, and then we do the B minor, and then an A major, we go to G major, and we kind of stay on G major at the end. But there are some of those places where we're kind of halfing chords through through the song. So so if, if we try it with our strum pattern, well, we end up kind of halfing some of those. So we know with A, down, up, up, down, A slash C sharp, down, up, D, down, down, up, up, down, D, down, down, up, up, down, B slash F sharp, down, up. through that part. So if we're going to try those arpeggio licks through the chorus, then you'd have the A lick. But then when you get to the A slash C sharp, you could just play the fourth fret on the A string and kind of do second fret on the G string for, for kind of the A C sharp. And then you'd be back on the D lick. So you kind of do the D lick twice. And then for, for the D slash F sharp, the, then we could go low E on the second fret and then kind of do that 3-2 lick. And then right after that, we go to the G and kind of half it, so we just kind of have enough time to kind of do low E and then B string on that one. And then we're back to the D lick. And then for the A major, we kind of got the A lick again. But then for the F sharp minor, you could just play fourth fret on the D string and then go to the G string on the second fret. So kind of a four, two lick there. And then we'd be on the B minor lick from before, that two, two, three, two. And on that last one, actually, what you want to do is kind of do just the B minor really quick. It's kind of like, a, and what I'm doing is kind of A string and then G and B together, kind of using fingers to kind of hybrid that. But you could take one note, too, if you wanted to. And then on the A, you could do the open A and then the, the twos together, and then end on the G lick. So all together, you got A lick, and then four, two, and then D lick, D lick, F, D slash F sharp with a two, two, three.
minor is the D strings, 4-2, and then the B minor, but then B minor with the bass, and then kind of G and B strings, open A, B and G strings, and then end on the G lid. So that would be kind of how you could apply that, that finger style through the tune. You got an A string for the bass, so you'd be trying to kind of hit that A string for the bass on that chord, and then the D slash F sharp, we got the low E string for the bass. And then the F sharp minor would have a low E string bass. So that's a little weird just because a lot of those are weird halving, but if we tried strumming through the chorus, you'd have the A with the bass, down, up, up, down, A slash D so with the bass, down, up, D with the D bass, down, up, up, down, D with the D bass, down, up, up, down, B slash F sharp, down, up, up, down, D with the bass, down, up, D with the D bass, down, up, up, down, D with the D bass, down, up, up, down, A with an A bass, down, up. F sharp minor with low E bass, down D minor with an A bass, down up, up, down D minor with an A bass, down A with an A bass, down G with low E bass, down up, up, down G with low E bass, down up, up, down G with low E bass, down up, up, down G with low E bass, down up, up, down And then we'd be going back into our verse part, so we tried that with our bass down up, up, down up. We got D with a D bass, down up, up, down D with a D bass, down up, up, down D with a D bass, down up, up, down D with a D bass, down up, up, down D minor with an A bass, down We got D with the D bass down up, up down D with the D bass down up, up down D with the D bass down up, up down D with the D bass down up, up down B minor with the A bass down up. So we tried that with, with just our down, down, up, up, down, up. We'd have A, down, up, up, down, A slash, C sharp, down, down, up, B, down, down, up, up, down, B, down, down, up, up, down, B slash, F sharp, down, up, up, down, G, down, down, B, down, down, up, up, down, B, down, down, up, up, down, A, down, down, up, up, down, A sharp, R, down, down. again so we could kind of do that with that D licks, B minor licks, B, B, D, A, B, B, D, A, and then we got the A licks, and then the two, three, G licks, G licks, A licks, D licks. But that's the basics of how you can strum through and, and kind of hybrid pick or, or even finger style. Hey, pretty girl by Kip Moore. So good luck!